Oh, hi there. Welcome to today's Science Short. I'm Will Kiffmeyer, an analyst here at One Energy. Today we're going to be talking about deformation, or the bend objects get when you apply force to them. We can often predict how something will deform just from our everyday experiences. For example, if I bend a spaghetti noodle like so, and stop bending it, it goes back to its original shape. But if I bend it just a little bit further, the noodle breaks and can no longer go back to its original shape. This helps explain the two main types of deformation, elastic deformation and plastic deformation. Let's go outside where I'll show you another example of this in action. Elastic deformation is when an object bends or changes form, but returns to its original shape once the force is removed. This is common in elastic materials like rubber bands, balloons, and other types of stretchy fabrics. For instance, a deflated balloon is very small, but when you inflate it, it stretches and expands into a much larger shape. And because of its elasticity, the balloon is able to return to its original shape. But no matter how stretchy a material is, everything has a limit. So what happens when the balloon is overfilled? Once a material passes its yield strength, it stops deforming elastically and starts deforming plastically. In the case of the balloon, this excessive stretching caused the material to weaken and give out from the pressure of the water. Now that we understand how elastic deformation works, let's take a look at plastic deformation. Plastic deformation is the deformation of an object that cannot be undone when released. A good way to remember this is by bending something that's made out of plastic. When you start to bend the plastic, it will deform elastically and can go back to its original shape when released. But if you bend it far enough, it will begin to deform plastically, which means the deformation, or bending, will remain even after it's released. In a lot of plastics, you can actually see this by looking at the point where the, it's bending. You can see that plastic stretches on the outer edge, which is what's causing the permanent deformation. If you continue to bend something further and further in its plastic region, eventually it will fail. Now that we have a decent understanding of elastic and plastic deformation, we can slide into the graphs that will show how materials can deform, stress-strain curves. Since all materials can undergo both elastic and plastic deformation, it's important to understand and visualize their properties. That's where the stress-strain graph comes in. This is called the stress-strain graph because it compares the stress on the y-axis to the strain on the x-axis. Stress is the measure of how much force a material is experiencing relative to its size or area. Strain is how the shape of an object is altered, like being stretched, squished, or bent. There are multiple ways to apply and calculate stresses and strains, so we will leave that for a future video. For now, we'll keep it simple. More force means more stress, while more bending or stretching means more strain. Let's take a look at an example stress-strain curve. This lumpy looking curve shows how a material like steel would deform as more and more stress is applied. As more and more force and stress is applied to the material, it will stretch or bend a proportional amount. The ratio of stress and deformation is shown by the slope of this linear section of the curve. The slope of this curve is defined as Young's modulus and is widely used in engineering and design. As you continue applying more force, the steel will start to deform faster and finally it will reach its yield strength. This is the furthest you can bend steel elastically to have it return to its original position. Everything beyond this point is called the plastic region. Any bending or deformation that happens after the yield strength is reached becomes permanent and cannot return to its original shape once the force is removed. As the metal continues to deform, it will eventually reach a point called the ultimate strength. This is the maximum force the material can handle. 
Beyond this point, the material starts to weaken until it reaches the end of the line and eventually breaks. At the end of the line is the failure point. This is the point where the metal will break, shear, bend, snap, crack, or pop. That's it for today's Science Short. Join us next time as we dive into more interesting topics. And remember, keep challenging everything. Thank you.